Asimov's first law: A robot may not injure a human being or, through inaction, allow a human being to come to harm. Injury evaluation of human-robot impacts. In this video, we are going to investigate how robot mass, robot velocity, or environmental constraints influence the injury in case a human-robot impact occurs. There are generally two types of blunt impacts: without and with clamping. <coughs> With the DLR LWR3, we conducted impact experiments at the German Automobile Club. From these experiments, a mechanical test bed was developed. This was done due to the high costs of approximately $1,000 per impact. This setup was especially tuned to produce the same numerical values as the crash test dummy for the so-called head injury criterion, short HIC an injury indicator used in the automobile industry. Here the correlation between the HIC and the injury severity is outlined, showing that a value of 650 corresponds to a 5% probability of staying one day in hospital. For the LWR, the maximum HIC indicates a very low injury level. The emergency stop of the KUKA KR6 is triggered by an electrical opener mounted on the test bed. The HIC values do not exceed a numerical value of 60 for 2 meters per second. The last robot evaluated was the KUKA KR500. Its emergency stop was as well triggered by the electrical opener. For the HIC, a saturation effect with increasing robot mass is observed, and even at top speed, the HIC indicates a very low injury. A typical football kick can already cause some injury if the ball is kicked hard enough. Obviously, this is not the case if the ball is kicked by a robot. In comparison, a human kick. Impacts are obviously less dangerous than being crushed.